Hi guys, this is Matt Granger, that Nikon guy for mattgranger.com. Today I am outdoors and at any minute it could start pouring down with rain and life couldn't be any better. Why? Because I'm here to do a lens shootout for you guys. I've got my Nikon 14 to 24 f2.8 and I've got the Tokina 16 to 28 f2.8 to do a head to head comparison. Now, in terms of specs, other than the focal range, these two are really similar. Okay, these guys are really similar in size and weight. The Nikon is a kilogram and the Takina is 946 grams. They're both about the same build quality. Uh, they're both a autofocus. Neither will take a filter. They both focus down to 0.28 of a meter. The main difference is the Nikon has instant manual focus override and costs double. The, when this one came out a couple of years ago, the Nikon 14 to 24, it got rave reviews saying that there was nothing wide angle zoom that could come near this in terms of sharpness and fall off. Um, I've used it for years and I love it to bits. And the Tokina has come out much more recently. It doesn't cover quite the same zoom range. It doesn't go as wide, but it does go a little longer. And I have to say the reviews have said that this is pretty darn close in terms of image quality and sharpness. Um, so I'm keen to compare them out head to head. So I'm going to do a similar series of tests as I did before. Um, I've brought along the Vanguard Tracker 4 tripod, which is a beast of a thing to put my D700 on to be sure that there really isn't going to be any movement. Both of these have a nine blade diaphragm. For, um, they're both mostly steel. Uh, this one has a little, the Tokina has a little bit more plastic in it. Um, in terms of size, the Nikon is definitely bigger at the long end, at the top end, um, but it, the weight is quite close. And this, the Tokina actually feels denser because it's a bit smaller, but it's almost the same weight. Uh, looking at the aesthetics of them, they both feel really well made. Have to say the lens caps on the Tokina aren't up to the same sort of quality, but that's not going to stop you from using them, surely. Um, so let's pop them onto the camera and have a test. Okay, so here's the first test I'm going to run. It's a focus speed and I'll also do the image quality here. Um, you can see I'm only about a meter or so away from this wall with vines on it. Because this is a super wide angle, it makes sense to me to do a close-up focus test. Um, you don't need to worry about the focusing speed so much if you're shooting a landscape from ages away. So we're going to start out with the Nikon 14 to 24. All right, so I'm using the central focus point. I've got this set on ISO auto, on fine JPEG. Uh, and to start off, let's focus it to closest focus. They both focus down to 0.28 of a meter. I'm using, as I said, the central focus point. Let's see how long it takes the 14 to 24 to focus. Pretty instant. Let's try that again. Pressing now and done. Now let's try it from the long end, from infinity. Little shuffle at the end, but still pretty much instantaneous. Now let's try it out at 16 mil. See if that makes a difference from close focus just as fast and from infinity faster that time from infinity okay here we are on the Tokina this is a 24 mil pop it into manual focus you have to do that to adjust it pop back into autofocus and now from close focus let's see how fast okay a little bit slower and you do hear the whir whereas the other one's silent let's try it one more time Okay, it's still fast and faster than most lenses, just maybe not quite as fast as the Nikon. Let's try it from infinity. Okay, that seemed to pause. Let's just try that again. Okay. Okay, that seemed three times it didn't quite catch it. And only on the last one it did last time. Okay, just gave up there and didn't give me the beep. There it gave me the beep. It's not out of focus, it just didn't give me the confirmation lock. Okay, so that's something interesting. Okay, let's take some actual image quality tests here. This is at 24mm at f2.8. That's the full shot and this upcoming is the central 100% crop. 
Okay, so that's at 24 mil. Now I'm gonna take one at F4. To my eye, that's pin sharp already. And then at F8. Okay, and let's have a look at 16 mil. I'll just do the two ends this time, so F2.8. There's the full shot on that one. You can notice a bit of barrel distortion, and there at the center, nice and sharp. And F8. Okay, again, nice and crisp all the way around there. Okay, and just to show you the difference, here it is at 14 mil. This is F8. The distortion looks worse than it really is, but it was pretty bad. This is at 24 mil. Okay, here we are at 2.8. That's the full shot. It's a little soft in the edges, but in the center there, pretty much on par. Okay, at F2.8. Now let's try it at F4. That's pretty good. Overall, looks nice. And now at F8. And you couldn't fault that. That's 100% sharp. Now let's try that at down at 16 mil. This is F2.8. There's the full shot, and edges of that do look a bit soft, but again, in the middle, nice and crisp. And F8. And start to feel the rain coming down now. And this will go closer than the other one, so let's try it at 28. That's at F8. This is at F28. That's all good. See, I told you it would start raining. Now, this is the one benefit of having a full weather sealed body and a pro quality lens. I don't need to worry about that. Same can't be said for the D51 I'm filming this on though, so I'd better get inside. Okay, so I assume you wanted something with a little bit more depth to look at as well. So here I'm going to get another sample shot with the Tokina. I'm focusing on the railing just here. Uh, and then you should be able to see how the depth improves from this table to this branch, to, you know, the, the rail and then the trees, and then that uh, restaurant up in the distance with the sign, the living room. So let's have a look at those images on the Tokina. Okay, so this is 28 mil on the Tokina, that's at F2.8. This is at F4, you can see some depth coming in there. This is at F8, now the front table's even sharp. And this is F14, pretty much everything in frame is sharp. Now this is much wider, this is at 16 mil, that's 2.8. This is F4, and you'll notice the depth of field is a lot greater at this focal length. That's F8, and already things are sharp. Okay, so that's quite interesting, really. Other than the small focus issue that I had with the Tokina, uh, the image quality is almost inseparable between the two. At F2.8 and F4, the Nikon leads the way. But I have to be fair to the Tokina, I did recreate that test on different uh, focus lengths and I didn't have the issue again. So I think it was something particular to that subject. So if you're in the market for an ultra wide zoom, then definitely check that one out. For Nikon, the Tokina 16 to 28 is great. If you don't need that 14 to 16 range, which really is stupid wide rather than just super wide. Um, that's pretty much all I have to say. At half the price, excellent build quality and excellent image quality, what's not to love? So check it out. Thanks for watching. This is Matt Granger, that Nikon guy for macgranger.com.